Today, first order linear differential equations made easy. Here's a typical exam question. Now, you've, one of the things with differential equations is that you have to use the right technique for the right sort of differential equation. So let's be very careful to make sure that the equation is a first order linear differential equation or we can make it into one. So the first thing that we look at is this dy dx term. We need to have dy dx. We can't have high derivatives, so no d, no d squared, y dx squared, or anything like that. We need to have dy dx, and it has to have nothing in front of it. So in this case, I've got x squared in front of it. I need to change that. So what I'll do is I'll divide both sides by x squared, and that will sort out the, the first order requirement. So now I've got my expression here. The second thing is the linearity that's mentioned in the name. Well, that just means when we look at all the y terms, here we've got dy dx and here we've got y, they have to be linear. So we can't have dy dx all squared, we can't have the square root of y, we can't have uh, cos y, anything like that. So this equation satisfies that requirement that both dy dx and y just appear as they are without any powers or anything like that. The next thing is though we can have an expression or a function of x in front of the y. So here I've got minus 3 divided by x squared but here we could have any function in x that we like. Cos x, x divided by 1 plus x squared, whatever you like. And similarly over on the right hand side we can have any equation in x that we want as well. So let's just take a moment to preview how this works because it's very clever. Someone looked at this and they said look what we've got on the left hand side is sort of the beginnings of the product rule for differentiation. So for example if I take the derivative of um, say y times sine x well I get, uh, I get uh, dy dx by uh, sine x plus y times cos x. So I've got this sort of dy dx and I've got a y and you can see here I've got the beginnings of that here. I've got a dy dx term and I've got a y term. So someone worked out, someone cleverer than me, worked out precisely what needs to be multiplied by, both sides by, so that we actually um, get the results of the product rule. In other words, so that we can then um, crystallize the left hand side or shorten the left hand side by using the product rule in reverse. So here's how we work out what to multiply both sides by. It's called the integrating factor which I've called hx and the way we do that is we take e, we take to the power of the integral of and then we put in whatever we've multiplied y by in our equation. So in my case here I've got negative 3 divided by x squared so that I put that in the integral, I do the integration and I'm left with hx equals e to the power of 3 divided by x. So now I multiply both sides of my differential equation by e to the 3 divided by x because that's the integrating factor and here's what I get. And now we can see the beauty of, of, of this type of solution. The left hand side is um, the derivative with respect to x of e to the 3 on x times y. You can try it out and see yourself. And the right hand side we'll just leave as is. Now once we've got it in this form, obviously it's just easy to integrate both sides with respect to x. And for those of you that were paying attention during the lecture on um, fundamental theorem of calculus, you'll know that if you take the integral of the derivative of something here, well we'll just get the original term. So we'll get y times e to the power of 3 divided by x and on the right hand side we'll get 7 times log of x plus a constant c. And once we got that we just divide both sides by e to the power of 3 divided by x and we get our solution. That's it for first order linear differential equations. I hope you found it useful.